Good evening everyone, Jerry here. I'm going to hopefully do a small demo, short demo, on how to build a, a very simple Sergey's uh, flow reactor. Um, it's not really a reactor in the sense that it's powered with a, an internal pump, but it basically increases the dwell time. Uh, sorry, the dwell time. <laughs> dwell time. Dwell time, say that ten times real fast, of the um, CO2 that's getting into your tank. So eventually it will also reduce the mist, you know, that gets from the needle wheel that, that powers it. So I'm going to focus in here. Um, over here to the left, um, I have a, a Westinghouse brand um, clear water filter housing. It's, you know, it's it's a decent size because this is going to be used for a 75 gallon tank. So I don't need the, the large 4 inch by, by 20, which are really enormous. And here's the O-ring for it, which you know, just sits on top. Right? And then here, here we have our cap, and I'll, it's, uh, I'm going to go into detail on, on that in a minute. Then we have some fittings, you know, to connect your hose. And then we, in fact, have some, you know, nice flexible Eheim, Eheim hose to be used for the inlet and outlet. And then here we have some clear plastic one inch um, tubing, which is going to be the so called counter current tube. And then here is the tool to, to use to tighten and loosen the housing from the head. Okay, um, that being said, what, what, if you take a look here, um, you see that the output is clearly marked out, if I can get out of the light here. And this one is marked in. And then here you have the you know, air release valve. Remember now, and this is very important, you're going to use these backwards. So you're going to pump water in to the out, and your flow is going to come out of the inlet. And I'm going to explain why. So if we flip it over, you'll, you'll see why. So here normally is the, yes, is the input. Right, you can you can see my finger coming in from the side. The water would come in here and come into the into the tubing, right? And then normally your carb your filter would go right here and, and attach to this. And there's a another one at the bottom of the uh, at the bottom of the container here that you can see that it would connect to, right? So it holds it in place. Um, what we're, what we want to do is we want to have the water come out here and flow down the counter current tube. Right, so it, it it comes down to the bottom of the container here, and that increases the dwell time because then the water will be forced down the tube and then flow up and back out of the out of the reactor. Right. So if you look here, how to I'm going to show you how to install the counter current tube. Here we have the counter current tube. I already cut it to size, and then here you see it it fits nicely into that. And voila, it is installed. Okay, um, that's that's pretty much it. Um, so then here you here you have your uh, housing, right? And you would just right. So we're just gonna place this right on top, right? and then you would screw it on. And you see there that the count, end of the counter current tube. You know, I'm displaying it here. Ordinarily, it would be a little further down. Right? And you can make it longer if you want. I, I probably will cut another one, but this will work for demonstrations purposes. Right? Now I'll just show you how I would connect the input and output. Just remove the counter current tube. Right? So here, the input and output are one inch uh, pipe thread. So here I have some PVC, uh, one inch by three quarter bushing. Right? So, so those would just go into each side. Running out of battery here. There we go. And then here you have your three-quarter to five-eighths barb adapter. This is brass, and be careful um, fitting brass to PVC because not all of them thread easily. And if it doesn't thread at least two or three easily, then it it shouldn't fit. See that that goes in nicely. See that? So I'll put some pipe thread on that and and whatever. So here you have your Eheim tubing, and you would just, you know, slip the end right over the edge, and one end 
you know, so this is your in, so this is going to be your out. So this would discharge back into your sump to be picked up by the main sump pump or however you want to deliver it back to the tank. And here you're out, this is going to get fed from your CO2 source. Um, I'm going to use a needle wheel, so I'm just going to connect more of this Eheim hose to the needle wheel. And the output of the needle wheel is going to connect directly to this, and, and that's it. Okay, folks, I uh, hope that wasn't too boring, and I hope that made sense. I'll uh, put a, another one up um, tomorrow when I, when I get it up and running and show you some more detail. All right, have a good one. Thanks.